It was the clash of the world orders on Thursday the 11th. The big NATO gathering in Washington, D.C., and the BRICS parliamentary forum in Russia's St. Petersburg. Both focused on international relations and security, but the goals and the results were very different. The big headline that came out from NATO was not the support for Ukraine or the strength of the alliance. It was in fact yet another series of gaffes made by U.S. President Joe Biden. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. <laughs> President Putin. You can beat President Putin. President Zelensky. I'm so focused on beating Putin, we got to worry about it. I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president, but I think she was not qualified to be president. The summit's big message was the unwavering support for Ukraine. You heard me say it before. We're building a bridge to NATO for Ukraine, a pathway leading to an eventual membership as they continue to implement important domestic reforms. This compact, which is on the stage here, is a central piece of that bridge. What happens to Ukraine matters. It matters to all of Europe. It matters to NATO. But the message that the world at large got was the fact that NATO is led by a president who can't hold his own anymore, making the post-NATO messaging all about damage control. I wanted to ask you um, about your, uh, you mixed up uh, presidents, uh, Zelensky and Putin earlier today. Um, that, <laughs> um, and you now have sort of your key allies, including the British Prime Minister, the President of France, uh, and the German Chancellor having to step in and make excuses for you on that. Um, and officials here are saying off the record that your decline has become noticeable. Hasn't this now, frankly, become damaging for America's standing in the world? Thank you. Did you see any damage to our standing in my leading this conference? Have you seen a more successful conference? What do you think? And the, move, the Putin piece, I was talking about Putin, and I said, and now, at the very end, I said, here, I mean, Putin, I said, oh, no, I'm sorry, Zelensky. And then I added five other names. Look, guys, the idea, anybody suggests that, that we haven't had an incredibly successful conference. How many times did you hear in that conference I know it sounds too self-serving, but other leaders, heads of state, in thanking me, saying the reason we're together is because of Biden, because Biden did the following. Look, folks, this is a... Uh, well, anyway, I, uh, I thought it was the most successful conference I've attended in a long time, and find me a world leader who didn't think it was. Je m'abstiendrai de faire tout commentaire de politique intérieure américaine. Il nous arrive à tous de faire des lapsus. Ça m'est arrivé, ça m'arrivera sans doute demain. Je vous demanderai la même indulgence qu'il faut avoir entre personnes bienveillantes. But the scene at the BRICS parliamentary forum was a complete contrast. Putin spoke about the growing importance of the BRICS alliance, which includes Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. The main focus of Russia's chairship, the BRICS, is to create conducive conditions for sustained development of all its member states. And I'm sure that by joining hands, by staying united, we will ensure the maximum fulfillment of economic investment, technological and human potentials of our countries. We will strengthen the constructive influence of BRICS on global processes. We will make a, the world we live in a safer and a more harmonious place. A 71-year-old Putin looked sharp, in control and ready to build a new world order. I have mentioned on multiple occasions that BRICS is one of the key elements of the emerging multipolar world order, and uh, it, uh, to a, have a great extent, reflects the interests and aspirations of the countries of the global south and east, and our uh, supporters worldwide, which is a huge number of countries and a growing number, too. We are open for intensifying engagements with all the countries who express their interest in the activities of BRICS. The discussion was about reforming the United Nations Security Council, establishing an EU-like parliamentary system, all of which points to a multipolar world order at a time when the United States is struggling with health of its head of the state. So is the Russia-China-led BRICS winning the battle of alliance? Will BRICS emerge as the biggest counter to the G7 and even NATO? Let us know what you think in the comments section below.